Barry Jordan, Fairburn Protocol H2H. I'd like to thank you very much for the support we've been getting. It's very, very good. We really appreciate it. it makes us feel great. The content of these videos is one of the reasons why we're very different than other programs out there. That in combination with the Fairburn method, uh, it's, it's really quite a dominating force. Thank you again. So, let's get on with it. Somatic markers. As of part one, we were talking about the difference of the different chain events. Chain events being, first of all, mental maps or muscle memory, if you prefer that terminology, how that was created. And just to re go back over that in three seconds, we're talking about all the different sensors in the body and how cognitive thought generates a, uh, a movement and then how those sensors relay that movement back to the cerebellum, how that makes a map, and then how repetition, 2,000, 3,500 repetitions, puts that map into a beginner's place and how we refine the map. Well, that's, that's exactly what we're getting to here. And so the next step in that link, of course, is somatic markers. Somatic markers is a thing that you hardly ever hear anyone talk about. The reason why is because it's really not of the martial art world. They, we talk about all those other things, but we don't get down into our body and we start understanding the mechanics and the physiology and how the, the brain works and the psychology and all that stuff and how it works. This comes into the world of combatants much more. It's not the traditional approach you know, that we believe things that were happening 2,000 years ago. It is a more concrete approach built in today's medicine, today's mentality, using systems that have been proven on the battlefield, and we bring those to you in methods of self-defense and combatants. So that's the, uh, that's the advantage we have there. Uh, somatic markers is the system of how the, the brain, how the mind, deals with the methods that we've learned. Now the methods that we're talking about today are specifically mental maps. So we go into a methodology and we learn the techniques associated with it. It doesn't matter what it was. It could be anything from, from a martial art through to like more traditional martial art, all the way through to uh, the heaviest combat system you can find, uh, whichever you choose to believe that is. Now the system is that you learn a single technique, and then that technique has to become what we call learned behavior, and it has to come out bam, when we require that movement to come out. So that's very interesting. So that system is called nomadic markers. We understand that the human brain is an extremely complicated mechanism, but extremely fast. It's capable of thought patterns that is not yet able to be put into computers. Calculations are such that we perform in terms of analyzing a situation and creating a response that is applicable to that situation. So how do we do that? What goes into that? Well, basically, it's very simple. We're going to use a few analogies along the way to help us understand it, and that's going to simplify the system for it, because uh, this is a complex issue that we're going to explain very, very basic here, so everybody understands it very clear. So, what happens? Well, we build those mental maps. Now, what happens to the mental maps? They go into the cerebellum. The cerebellum being the most primitive part. It's where our, our subconscious initiation of movement comes from. So, how does it pick those initiation of movements? Wonderful. So, that map that goes in there, let's call it a file. Now, in your cerebellum, your cerebellum is basically just like a giant filing cabinet. So, in comes file A, file B, File C, as we learn these mental maps or create these mental maps into the whatever level of expertise. Fine. But then in real life, a situation happens and we need map B. How do we get it? How does the brain go back and pick out map B and, and, and bring it out? The problem is, is that we have thousands of maps in there from everything on how to walk to how to chew to how to fight. So all those maps are in there. And it's got to go in there in a fraction of a second, a hair of a second, pick out B and bring it to, bring it to speed. So how does it do that? So if we can use an analogy, imagine we take all those files, we put them into a big drawer, and we number them. Then we color them. Okay, so we have a whole group that are red. Now red deals with a particular situation. Let's say man grabs me by the shirt. Okay, so now that would trigger an instant reflex in my mind to go for a solution, go for the response for that. Where's that map, and how? And where, where is it in terms of the filing cabinet? So because we can't say, let's go find that particular file and expect to find it quickly, we do reference right away. So somatic markers is that reference system. First thing we do, let's pretend that that file that we need is in red. Right away, boom, it goes through the colors, green, blue, brown, red, bing, got it. And so it pulls out all the files that are similar to it, similar to the situation. It may not get that one right away. If it has a little bit more time, it'll go through that and it'll pick out that exact file and bring it out. And that, that, will call, that we call retrieval of the file under the system of somatic markers. Somatic markers being the color and then the enumeration of the file. Of course, they're not really like this in your brain. This is, again, I remind you, an analogy. So that allows us to, to create that thing. 
So now what happens when we train? So we train, and let's pretend that my favorite movement is an edge of hand blow. So we edge of hand blow, and we edge of hand blow, and we edge of hand blow. And, and just for fun, just skip back to uh, uh, how we make a mental map. What I was just demonstrating would be a mental map of a short shot. I better do a greater shot in order to have that as a good mental map. So it pull, we're looking to pull that map out. When we pull it out, we can now, it will automatically fire. That's great. That's how we get our backhand and badminton. This is how we do all our things. This is how we fight. This is how the shots come out almost, almost as if reflex. Now here's the kicker. This is the fun part. How do we optimize that system? How do we optimize the system so that when that situation hand happens and I go into file red and the file I want specifically is a particular one. It's going to be shot to the vagus nerve, edge of hand blow, short range with a, with a deep follow through because I want the body to move after I hit the, the body and create that movement after the, uh, the inertia has been broken or ridden if you, or forced if you prefer. So that movement we start to practice. The more recent the movement is practiced and with the greater frequency the higher repetitions it practices, A, the movement gets better but it changes position automatically within the filing cabinet to a point where we can get a thing what they call mission-specific training. Mission-specific training is something that's going to happen. We're going to go out and we're going to do a particular thing. And we're going to take down a sentry, let's pretend. Now, my, 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 the guy that's going to work with me is going to apply a choke. My job is going to be to take his knees out. So as soon as I take his knees out, he'll apply the choke and he's down on the ground and that's done. Or another situation from Zaps, I'll take him from behind and my partner will administer an immediate shot to the solar plexus, robbing him of his, his ability to speak, yell, breathe. This sort of thing. So what we do for like, for like a week before, we practice just that one shot over and over and over and over. So it's, it's systematic bang, it's systematic bang, it's systematic bang, it's systematic bang, it's systematic bang. And, and it just becomes highly repetitive. When we're doing that type of repetition, when we're doing that type of, of repetition of movement in terms of how the filing cabinet absorbs it, it comes to the top of the file. It's the top file. And when the stuff happens, when we go down into real life and we do the movement under stress or under surprise, that's the movement that comes out because it's primed. It's moved right to the front of red, remember we use that analogy, and it's the number, first file in the thing, in that cabinet. That's the one we're going after. It's prepped to go. Now, here's the funny thing. We're not doing mission-oriented training very often, especially if you're a civilian. So. Why does this have a reference to you? Well, it's very specific. Because every single guy you talk to, they have that, that, that go-to move. You know, that roundhouse kick that they like, that, that whatever movement it is, uh, you know, chop, whatever, it doesn't matter what it is, it's, it's a specific mental map. And that specific mental map, they like. They do it often, they do it well, and the body likes it. And that starts to place it into that filing cabinet at the front. So that's your go-to move. That's your go-to move. So why is systematic uh, systems of this uh, problem is very important? Why is somatic markers very important? Because let's pretend my go-to move is that roundhouse kick. Well, if I do that roundhouse kick on ice in the winter, in dress shoes, I'm going down. I will, I will fall and I will, I will, because the movement that's involved in that thing, so I can't do that movement on ice in dress shoes in the winter. Okay, so now I have to go to my second best move, or to my alternate move, which means I have to go through the filing cabinet again. Or, better said, I go to the filing cabinet, get out the roundhouse kick, re reject the roundhouse kick, go deeper. These causes hesitation in regard to the technique we use, or misuse of the technique we use. So we've taken that whole mental map we've developed, we've brought it into our system, and we've bled it into a system of other techniques that are applicable and not applicable for a multitude of reasons, even though it's the same situation. Man grabs me by the shirt, I chop into the radial nerve. Summer, spring, winter, fall, standing up to the waist in water, it doesn't matter. Same initiation. Man comes to be forced to be front frontal choke, tiger claw to the eyes, that mental map flies forward every time underwater, on the beach, climbing gear, full dress, winter gear, snow, mud, slippery, doesn't matter. The technique comes out and it works. 
So this is where we start taking the concept of mental maps, creating the mental maps we desire to have, optimizing their ability through repetition, optimizing their effectivity, bringing that forward, and then optimizing its system, optimizing how that system relates to the somatic markers, how it pulls it. We place the file intentionally at the forefront in a manner that gives us the greatest advantage at all different times, regardless of the circumstance, regardless of this man, woman, child, who's doing whatever, receiving whatever, initiating whatever. So this is how somatic markers work, and this is how we refine them. So if you want movement to be exact, refine your mental map. Phase one, that's what we talked about in part one. If you want that map to be readily active, have that gun in your pocket, so to speak, then you want to have your somatic markers sharpened and lined up like ducks. And that's a mental process that you instinctively do. It's a knowledge-based uh, process that you instinctively create. That'll move you on to instant response with a specific response that is capable of doing what you need to do given no, 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 uh, no different situation. Now, next time we talk, we'll talk about speed and accuracy trade-offs. That's pretty much the third component of this, this little uh, three-component link. Because we create our map, we bring it to the forefront of our system, and then we start to execute it under stress and speed and duress. And that speed, generally speaking, causes a complication to the execution of that map, as will the duress. So, thank you very much again for your time. Thank you for your support. I love bringing this stuff to you. Fairman Protocol H2H. We're a little bit different. Thank you. Have a great day.